is how we ride. This is how we do. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and hey, we got a bunch of things to talk about today. I mean, you had Brent Marks come from 20th to 1st in the All-Star Circuit of Champion event. This is my opinion, and I hate to say this because I am a, a sprint car guy at heart, but what Brent Marks did last night, in my opinion, doesn't matter. What I mean by it doesn't matter is, oddly enough, the late mile world's getting very close to what I'm talking about. You know, I like to see the best of the best drivers go up against the best of the best drivers. And when somebody wins a race in a particular series, I, I, if, it, if it ain't really, you know, beating the best, then it really just don't count. I mean, if you had the best of the best there, it would have been a battle for 10th or maybe even to get into the A main. Now, Brent Marks can obviously get it done anywhere. We are consistently reminded all the time that the world of outlaw drivers are top of the line when it comes to everything you can think of. I mean, they are just that much better than everyone else. And I'm not taking anything away from the all-star drivers. You could be you could be a really top talent driver. Uh, but equipment does matter in the sprint car uh, in the sprint car racing world. But it just does seem that there is that next level. Could some of y'all possibly jump in the JJR41 and not wreck all the cars on the racetrack? I think some of y'all could do that. Some of y'all could go out there and perform better than some of the drivers in the Outlaw series. Some of y'all would be a little more calm out there or 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 not so afraid of not being the best because you're down there working your ass off in a lower series, lower division, and you haven't just had opportunities that you feel like you must perform because you ain't got no monetary pressure behind you to go out there and 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 make sure you get it done or 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 psychologically psych yourself out to where you're pulling moves and 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 racing on the racetrack in ways that are uh erratic due to outside pressure and eyes so there's a lot of reasons why the jjr 41's all over the racetrack i think some people are out there just wanting to say that carson macedo can't drive i think that there's a lot of pressure on a situation like carson macedo where he's been in situations and put in situations that not necessarily his uh resume put him there for but his um nepotism did now some of y'all could be like well isn't he lucky well there's a lot of pressure that comes with that and there's a lot of outside influence and, and, and judgments to make it feel like you have to prove yourself. And so you cross those limits and you go across noses and flip cars and slam into the side of David Gravel and all these things. So there's a lot of things happening in the sprint car world currently. Now, the reason I say that the late model world might be getting close to this world of outlaw ne next level, this one group is just above everyone else in racing because some people would say, you know, the problem with the World of Outlaw series is since everybody's good, since everybody's so close, you know, and and even looking at qualifying times, the the late models when they qualify, there's a couple tenths separating, you know, the top twenty in the in the sprint car industry. It could be one tenth from from first to fifteenth. It's in, it's insane how close they are actually getting over there. But the late model world slowly getting that with this XR Super Series. We saw the XR Super Series uh, last night have all the stars. I mean, Jonathan Davenport and a B main needing a provisional uh, and the racing with all these stars because everybody's so great and so great and so good is closer to the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series. It's people say that, you know, there just ain't much racing. I mean, I heard uh, Blake and Anderson uh, give a shout out to Dirt Tracker because who says there isn't passing in sprint car racing? Well, there there is passing in, in divisions of sprint car racing that don't have the best of the best. You got a bunch of mediocre guys, and you put somebody who is the best, and you start him 20th, and then, yeah, he can pass cars. But you put that guy who's one of the best into the field with all the best, and it's hard to make moves and make passes, just like Jonathan Davenport in that late mile in the XR Super Series event. And just like most of these XR Super Series events, it's extremely hard to make passes and make moves because of how talented and, and, and tough the fields are. So the XR Super Series is giving the late mile world a little slice of what it's like to be in a World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series situation where the best of the best are there. And sometimes the racing action suffers because of that. Now, some people would say, well, the racing wasn't that that bad. It was okay. I mean, I think one driver led every single lap. 
I think if Kyle Larson was there and was ripping the lip like he was, you know, against Davenport, he he probably would have won. I thought the top side was there. Herb and, and Bronson were trying to hit it. I guess the only thing I would critique the XR Super Series about is I wish I was there in person. It's insane how one series has sort of built a model on the streaming platforms uh, where I I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm being mean when I say it's possibly the worst stream there is. I mean... The main announcer's okay, but he couldn't really get in too many words without Scott Bloomquist stepping all over him. Like, Bloomquist just had no respect for the guy, which hmm, Jensen Ford might agree. And then the cameras were on racing, but switching off racing. And then there was some weird thing running through the crowd screaming at people. Nobody was chanting back because they were halfway scared of what was going on. I mean... Flow don't pull shit off like that. Dirt Vision's the closest thing to professional outside of Flow, I think. I mean, it, it, it's amazing how good those those services are providing a production. And you would think you would get that feel, that level of production, at a $100,000 to win race that technically is being viewed by anybody who's interested in dirt, this this was the stars of the stars event here. This was everybody and everyone. When you have such a, a an event of that magnitude with all those people, not only there, but all the people paying attention to what you got going on because you have all the stars uh, held hostage with your big payout, and then you represent that to the world, yeah, the racing on the track may not have been minor league, but the damn production of that stream was minor fucking league. And and luckily, us dirt people know that it's minor league because we've watched flows and dirt visions and stuff. But what if that was the first time a person was tuning in to a dirt track race? There, there's at least four or five times when you're watching an XR broadcast where you're like, what the hell are they doing? What the hell was the one replay with Chris Madden where it looked like a slideshow? Like, I got regular people who don't know anything about productions or racings or any... What the hell is that? Get this is on the grand stage to represent the sport with the stars and everyone that are involved. Another reason that maybe this outside world looks at what we're doing and says, yeah, that's just triple fucking A because that. The representations of the sport. Flo was there with the Kyle Larson race look, looked way better than that. I don't think a Brian Carter or a Michael Rigsby would allow that product. And streams like that need somebody to say something before that becomes normalized. Because of stream qualities and, and camera switchings and, and all of the, what we saw last night becomes a normal. If that's normalized, that ain't ever going to grow. And honestly, we're going to have to have the streaming to pump any kind of bigger amount of money. You can't build no more stands at Volunteer. The only way you're going to get money is with the streaming. So that streaming has to be successful for this thing to grow. Even the NFL does the same type of thing. It's a 100,000 seat stadium, but there's how many millions of people watching and that's why they're able to pay the money. That's why the, the, the players are getting their amount of money. That's why the, the, the owners of the team are making so much money. It's all based on people watching whatever's going on that are not there in person. Every successful business model is that way. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I think. Is this acceptable? The product that XR is putting out there. Is the all-star circuit of champions just, you know, when you watch Brett Marks go from 20th to 1st, is it really, I mean, when you equate the best of the best, is it really just watching a race for 10th? And then Carson Macedo, what's happening there? What is happening there? I do not know. I have some theories, obviously. Pressure's a real thing, guys. Pressure's a real thing. Some people break. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, until next time. This is how we ride. This is how we do. Riding mud, sliding up higher in the groove. Don't give a damn about the cash we're spending. With the time we got, we choose to play it on the go. To stay out on the run. We are high, wide, and handsome. Ain't telling you what's right or wrong or what to choose. Yeah.